The MBS 3000 isn't the only new addition to the MBS switcher line. The MBS 6500 series comes in both two and three ME models, the MBS 6520 and the MBS 6530. These two new switchers leverage the incredible power of the entire MVS feature set. The 6500 series has all the features of the MVS 3000 plus a few key extras. The MVS 6520 is a 2ME switcher with 32 inputs and 16 outputs, while the MVS 6530 has 48 inputs and 32 outputs. Both switchers have the same overall specifications as the 3000, with a couple of key differences. Both switchers include the ability to add an optional 3D digital effects system, and virtually unlimited aux bus mixing is a standard feature. Plus, the touchscreen menu for the main panel is a little different too. So let's start with a tour of the 6500's new control panel. And the best place to start a tour is the menu system. You can see here this is a different menu. This is a Sony touchscreen, the ICP6511, and we're using this instead of the third party we used on the MVS3000. Over on the left-hand side, we have the top buttons, so I don't have to go to the menu to get these, although that still works here if you want them. On the right-hand side are the knobs, so when I select something, I can adjust knobs rather than having to use the mouse. Of course, you can still use the mouse if you want to. And the best part is, is right on the left-hand side is a USB port so I can connect my USB drive right to the menu without having to put some extender cables or reach behind the switcher. Now it's really important to know that the ICP6511 panel can also be purchased for the MBS3000, in case you don't want to use a third-party monitor and a mouse. Now let's take a look at the changes to the main panel. So this part of the switcher over here still has 24 cross points. Obviously it's got an extra ME to accommodate the three MEs on the 6530. Another different place here, is here, right in this area. We've added this to this wider control panel. This gives us the ability to have ME re-entries everywhere. It also has ME re-entries for the keyers. And over onto the side, we have buttons for how the displays are going to look and whether we're looking at key signals, some cross point holds, pre and post macro for button assignments, and attach enable, aux mixing, which we'll get to a little bit later. And this is a really cool feature right here. These are ME quick select buttons. What these allow me to do is at a moment's notice, I can change this row from being program preset to ME2, to ME1, or back to program preset. It's very handy if you want to make a quick control panel change without having to dive into the menu system. So I'm going to set these back to program preset and ME2, so they're all in a row again. And notice again, we have the electronic labels to tell you when you've changed something. Let's move over to the right here, and you can see that we moved the trackball and the multifunction module over to the lower right. Now on the 3000, they were up here where ME1 would normally be. Uh, we didn't want to make the panel so deep, so we moved everything to the side a little bit and made it a tad bit wider. The functions of these modules are identical to what they were on the 3000. In my opinion, the best new feature on this panel is right here. Program preset on an MVS 6530 has eight downstream keyers as a standard feature. So here we have DSK 1, 2, 3, 4, and up here is 5, 6, 7, and 8. And just as you would expect, the labels here tell me what is in the keyers. So if I change my keyers around, you can see these changing. Same thing with my other keyers up here. As I change these, you can see the label in here is telling me what's on my keyer. These are the cut buttons, these are the mix buttons, and same thing up here. These are the cut buttons, and these are the mix buttons. Now there's a second mode for these LCD buttons. In the mode we're in, key trans, that's where you have the cut on and fade on buttons. If we go to key snapshot, what this is going to do is bring up these things that say key one, key two, key three, transition, adjust. So if I hit the key one transition adjust button, over here on the multifunction module, the display changes and it's letting me adjust what the transition and all those kind of things are for DSK one, two, three, four, etc. So right here I can say I have a mix, like I do right now. I can have a wipe. I can even have a DME wipe. Then I can use the key snapshot, that's KSS store, to store what I just programmed into one of four memories for each keyer. So now I can remember that this one is going to have a DME wipe, come over here, change this to wipe, hit key snapshot store on number two, and now number one will give me a DME wipe, number two remembers that it's a regular wipe. 
So over here in the next transition area, this is how you're going to control all eight keyers. It's going to look a little different from the other MEs because I've got eight keyers to deal with. So here, this is where I would select DSK1, and you can see that on preview now. DSK2, 3, 4, etc., or 1, 2, 3, and 4, or even 1, 2, 6, 7, and 8. Up here on the menu, this is how you take care of the eight keyers. So here's the program preset menu. We're looking at the keyers. On the left, you see DSK1, 2, 3, and 4. And this little button right here lets me toggle between 1, 2, 3, and 4, and 5, 6, 7, and 8. We felt it was better to put that in rather than having tiny, tiny little buttons that would be hard to hit. And one added feature. Let me turn on all my keyers again. We've got one through eight. There are actually four resizers on downstream keyer. So I can move key one, two, and five, and six in the resizers. I can move them independently. I can turn on some rotation if I want to, all independently.